Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Malley here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 19th, 2022, recorded around 1 p.m. Eastern Time. We have a lot to talk about today, including a new storm alert for portions of northeastern Mexico and southern Texas. We have a new tropical cyclone that is likely to develop within the next 24 hours, so let's go and jump straight into everything. Taking a weather across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, we noticed that the Atlantic is starting to ramp up. First of all, we have Invest Area 99L now in the southern Bay of Campeche and southern Gulf of Mexico. This will be moving towards the northwest over the next day or so and will likely be impacting portions of northeastern coastal Mexico and far southern Texas as what could be a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm. And we'll be watching a tropical disturbance out here, not yet tagged by NHC, but could get slung around from the monsoon trough and find itself within maybe favorable conditions and could go on to develop. We'll talk about all that here right now. So first of all, in the Atlantic Basin again today, we are watching this system in the southern Bay of Campeche with a 60% chance of developing over the next five days. Really, this only has about the next 24 to 36 hours over water before it will eventually crash into land here. So eventually, this will be moving towards the northwest like this and eventually move into land where it could impact portions of southern Texas and far northeastern Mexico. We can see that today, the pressures have fallen down to 1,009 millibars with winds of 25 knots, so 30 miles per hour located at 19.6 north, 92.8 west. And again, this will generally be moving towards the northwest like this over the next day. And when we look at the visible satellite imagery, we can tell that, again, we have a pretty good system that is well organized today, well on its way to becoming a tropical cyclone. We notice that in the overall wind flow pattern here, we don't really notice anything super significant, at least in terms of a closed low level circulation, but there is some hints there now that some of this low level flow is beginning to increase. We notice how it's kind of curving around like this. Now, partially this is aided by the curvature of the coastline. You can kind of see that curvature of the coastline here that does actually help in spinning up these tropical cyclones faster in the Bay of Campeche. But we do notice that we've got accelerated flow from the south here. We've got wind coming from, uh, you know, basically from the north curving back down towards the south. And we've got southerly winds going north. So this overall is resulting in a broad low pressure system that is beginning to form somewhere within this vicinity and will likely try to consolidate further as we progress through the next uh, couple of hours into the, about the next day or so. If we look at the zoomed out visible satellite imagery today, we notice that again, not much outflow is indicated by the system so far. There's not really much in the way of outflow that would indicate significant organization in terms of that category, but that's kind of what you would expect generally for one of these lower end systems. There's not much uh, convective outflow, at least right now, or any outflow in the upper levels rather. Uh, but we do notice the one thing that might be starting to impinge on this system is this trough. You can kind of already see some shower and thunderstorm activity uh, associated with that up towards portions of Texas right now. If we look at the GFS forecast, this is the 12Z run valve for 2 p.m. this afternoon. We can already kind of see some of that is occurring. We have this broad trough here and an upper level low here. And we notice that again around this uh, flow here, we generally have kind of northwest to southeast flow. And that is going to be impinging on our system. Right now it's located down here and you can actually notice that there is uh, some upper level anticyclonic flow here. But as we progress through the next couple of hours and head into the early part of tomorrow, that actually begins to decay as the system not only approaches land, but also due to the fact that there's now more accelerated wind shear and this storm will be heading into that environment. So conditions do become a little bit more unfavorable as this approaches the coastline here, but either way, there will be some impact risk here to portions of far southern Texas uh, directly from 99L. This does not account for any other flooding concerns that we will see across Dallas and portions of northern Texas over the next couple of days. But at least concerning 99L, probably will likely be a tropical depression or storm. Some elevated impact risk is out there for portions of far southern Texas like Brownsville and McAllen. 
generally for the potential of flooding concerns because that area was already swamped with flooding from 98L. So any additional rainfall could lead to some pretty substantial flooding across that area. Therefore, there's an elevated threat of impacts there. But again, that does depend a little bit on the track as well because right now some of the uh, some of the main impacts could go into far southern portions of Texas and then into portions of Mexico as well. So we'll have to watch how that plays out with time. But again, this is going to depend a lot on that track and the hurricane hunters will be going out later. So they will be able to provide us with a better estimate on what impacts to expect for portions of Texas as we progress through the next couple of days. Now looking out further across the deep tropics today, we have a couple of things starting to make our attention. Right now we were talking about that area of disturbance in the tropical main development region. Well here it is right now, we notice that this is an area south of the Cabo Verde Islands currently, this broad monsoon trough. We are talking about how this may go on to develop into something and the GFS certainly does indicate that this kind of one area begins to pinch off and gets slung to the north here as a result of that monsoon trough. And it does actually try to consolidate into a weak end tropical cyclone near the Cabo Verde Islands and then continues on its journey across the MDR before finally picking up steam once again as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. Now, uh, this is certainly not in necessarily voodoo land. This is by next week and development could occur as early as Sunday going into Monday on the GFS. So this is within the time frame where we actually do have to pay attention to this for our next potential system besides 99L. Now, if we actually look at how the, GF, or the GFS ensembles kind of forecast this to be, we can actually see that there actually is a clustering of potential areas of low pressure, potentially indicating a storm in this vicinity near the islands here, the Cabo Verde Islands, by Sunday going into Monday. And if we actually look here on the European forecast, it is much the same here. Not as much of a significant evolution will actually go to the, um, the closest run here. You notice that again, it's not as far to the north but there actually does end up being some members here of the European ensembles that also pick up on the same thing. Now, either way, if we look at our 200 millibar wind pattern here, it is going to be pretty favorable, at least in, in, in the upper level wind environment. Uh, there is an upper level low here, or an upper level high rather, and this is going to allow for accelerated easterly winds here, allowing for that convergence of the monsoon trough and those tropical easterly winds to create that background cyclonic vorticity needed for tropical cyclone formation. Now, the one problem is the sea surface temperatures as you go further north are certainly not as substantial. The water temperature diminishes. And as you notice here, there is actually some pretty significant dry air still around to the north. So we'll see if this actually becomes a thing. But either way, right now, if we kind of look out in the longer range, if we take a look at the 500 height anomalies here, we notice that, uh, again, so far, this doesn't really seem to be much of a concern for land. There is this broad upper level um, area of low pressure out here that would generally probably try to send something more towards the north like this if it were to develop. And in the long range, that doesn't really seem to change much at all until we get to September where there's generally more ridging across the Atlantic basin, sending these systems further west as they try to develop, all right? So again, the main concern right now, we'll be focusing on invest area 99L, soon to become probably a tropical depression or a weak tropical storm. And then we'll be focusing on the Cabo Verde Islands towards the end of this weekend and beginning early next week for potential impacts from a tropical cyclone trying to develop there as well, all right? So that being said, I do hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali, and I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.